to summarize the, oh, sorry, oh, we're going to talk into the microphone here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're going to um, summarize this um, uh, planning workshop that uh, happened uh, last uh, summer. This was on opportunities for genome sequencing and beyond. Um, and uh, I'm going to just basically just give you the summary of what was in the workshop. And then in the second part of the talk, Rick is going to kind of come up and kind of give you a little bit more of a distillation of this and kind of our additional suggestions uh, related to uh, genome function. And just the high level of the message that we want to get across is obviously we think that functional annotation is critical, and this was shown in the workshop, that tools need to be um, developed uh, for this and that we believe, of course, that we need a systematic catalog of these things. So I'm just going to start with the um, summary of the workshop. So um, the workshop was very carefully uh, documented by NHGRI. Essentially, you can get all the materials, including a video cast and whatnot, from this link. Uh, and there was two um, main questions that this workshop um, focused on. One was uh, discussing questions and opportunities addressed using genomic studies, starting with sequencing but looking at other technologies, and then thinking about future NHGRI programs uh, addressing these areas. Um, now, I, I, I think one thing that's useful to talk about before we go into the details of the workshop is I think the backdrop for a lot of the discussion was, was this idea of thinking about a future where NHGRI is only going to do a minority of human genome sequencing, and this is a really kind of interesting future to think about. And I, I think the way to think about this backdrop is it's really a tremendous success story. I mean, it's this it's a success story of developing something that really takes off, and now it's kind of, you know, kind of genius out of the bottle in a sense. But the question is, well, the question at the workshop was what to do now, okay? And the, in the um, workshop minutes, this is what was written, um, NHGRI needs to position itself to positively influence the large amount of sequencing that will occur. And so that's the question of what that, what is that? And there was a lot of things discussed in the workshop, for instance, involving uh, NHGRI should involve itself in partnerships. There's also a lot of discussion about creating exportable technologies, platforms, and standards that could be used by others looking at the genomes. And there was a tremendous amount of discussion at the workshop of this idea of scaling. And so the idea, of course, of scaling an assay to the genome, but now really scaling something to more and more experiments, really scaling beyond the, the scale of NHGRI into large amounts of human genome sequencing. And so that, that was kind of the backdrop of a lot of the discussions. And so there was four sessions in the workshop. Uh, one focused on the genomic architecture of disease. This is really large-scale sequencing, the Mendelian sequencing. Then there was, of course, looking at the uh, genomic function, genome variant uh, discovery with function, which I'm going to focus on. There was a bit on clinical genomic sequencing at scale, and then comparative and evolutionary genomics. And these are just the executive summaries from the uh, minutes for the, um, the workshop. Basically, all of these uh, areas, I think, the the consensus was that they were very important areas, so that, of course, this should continue to be an important activity. Um, it was felt that integrating genomic variant discovery with function was critical uh, to NHGRI. Uh, the, for the clinical genomic sequencing, what I got was that it would require a quick evaluation of the utility of sequencing approaches to clinical implementation. And then for comparative and evolutionary genomics, the report says this is still needed to inform the prioritization and interpretation of genomic variants. And this is just directly from the um, report on the website. So now let me tell you a little bit more about the uh, session we're going to focus on here, integrating genomic variant discovery function. So the way um, NHGRI set this up is they had one uh, overview talk by Joe Ecker, um, sort of similar to some degree to what you just heard, but not exactly the same. Then they had this discussion group of about 25 people, and they listed their names here. A lot of the same people uh, here now is from that group. And then they had two people, um, Rick and myself, to sort of summarize the consensus points of these 25 people. And so what I'm going to do is first give you the, um, essentially the presentation we gave in Washington earlier where we summarized these uh, 25 people's uh, point of view. So overall, what did they think? They felt this was an opportune time to study function on a large scale, and basically the reason is we have a huge number of uh, genomic variants uh, being sequenced. I mean, just tremendous amounts of sequencing, and of course the way to connect these uh, variants to kind of function in biology is, um, or to biology is through, through function. And there's also um, a tremendous amount of development of new technologies for getting, um, getting at function, such as CRISPR, um, single cell sequencing, and so forth. And there was a, 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 a feeling through the group of the 25 that we needed a foundational resource to integrate functional information on many discovered variants. And there was a lot of discussion of what would be in such a resource. 
There was a bit of discussion that function um, occurs at many different levels. There's, of course, a molecular biochemical level, there's a kind of cellular level, and there's, of course, the organismal phenotype. And it's not clear, you know, what's the best uh, scale to study the function at and so forth. And there was this feeling that NHGRI should focus on the sweet spot. It's not exactly clear what that sweet spot is, but they should focus on it. <laughs> and um, there was a lot of discussion about where, you know, the best models, cells, mice, model diseases and so forth. Um, there, was a, there was a discussion of a dichotomy of directions for looking at function. Uh, on one hand, we can sort of do uh, to some degree what we've done in ENCODE where we've developed this catalog of, el of elements and all possible variants and then intersect this completed catalog um, with the variants found in disease studies to interpret them. And, um, and a great example of this is uh, Jay Shinduri gave a challenge talk at the summer um, workshop where we kind of talked about this very large scale. Uh, overall catalog uh, making approach. Uh, the, uh, the other approach is uh, sort of a bottom-up approach where we sort of take the variants that we find to be associated with disease and then, after the fact, characterize them functionally. And this is really a, um, an approach that sort of more relies on developing the kind of genome technology to be there to characterize those variants after we find them. And the, the group of 25 felt these both had merits. Um, Related to that, there was another sort of associated dichotomy between uh, studying function with uh, really high throughput experimentation in a standardized high throughput way uh, versus, you know, really uh, going deep and really trying to understand what a specific gene is really doing. And people felt that to do the latter, you really needed to have a domain expert, a person who's really studying that thing. But the group felt that the second thing was not really the province of NHGRI, at least not on its own. Uh, and the, but the group felt that both of these things were very important and that ideally what would, one would have is some sort of specialized informatics infrastructure to tie these two things together, the high throughput and the uh, sort of domain um, expert. So there was other considerations that the group raised. Uh, one was that when we think of scaling, we often think of scaling to the genome, but of course there's more and more of the scaling to the population, to a whole a group of individuals, and there's been tremendous success in scaling a lot of these functional genomics assays to many people, such as the success of a lot of these EQTL uh, projects. And a related type of scaling is kind of looking at a kind of personal functional genomics, looking at functional genomics of a person over time, doing a longitudinal study. And there was a feeling that this is also a very powerful uh, way to scale uh, functional genomics. And then a final uh, thing the group felt was that functional genomics is uh, valuable beyond just variant characterization. Um, remember, that was the charge of the workshop, really, to think about functional genomics in the terms of variant characterization. But the group felt that um, functional genomics could obviously be used uh, to characterize cell types, develop cellular biomarkers, and there's a very nice uh, challenge talk by Aviv Regev on single-cell transcriptomics in the Human Cell Atlas Project. Um, okay, so then uh, Rick and myself uh, presented this summary to about 100 people. There's a four breakout sessions. 25, so the 100 people, and then there was a lot more discussion. And uh, NHGRI, I guess, wrote this down like they're doing now in their Google Doc or whatever they're doing, <laughs> and I mean, like they're filming it, whatever they were doing. And, 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 and then, no, no, then, then they synthesized it into their recommendations, okay? And now I'm going to present you back their recommendations, and you'll see they slightly differ from the original groups, and they expand on some things more because, because of the discussion. So first, there was three recommendations from this whole discussion. First is that the overall question of defining the function of uh, coding and non-coding sequences is foundational for genomics. And, you know, as we expect, the, one of the recommendations is we should develop and deploy assays reporting uh, disease-relevant uh, vari uh, functions at the variant gene. Now, the key thing I make right here, the pathway level. There was a lot more discussion in the bigger group than the little group about thinking about pathways and networks and really thinking about kind of interactions, and so that's why I highlight this. Now, under this big recommendation, there was four bullets, and I show the rest of them here. And what I did is I colored these two in green because they were essentially just restatements of what was said in the smaller group. You know, we should look at different scales, we should do this function first or variant first thing. So I'm not going to spend time on that. But there was an additional bullet added here, really, um, on the importance of computational methods that need to be developed to predict uh, the effect of uh, coding and non-coding variants. Um, the second recommendation really is more of a technology-oriented one. We should develop tools to manipulate genomic sequences of scale and experimentally characterize their um, impact. And here, um, I think the sort of things that were emphasized is that 
what we get often from these uh, disease studies is statistically significant variance, but we really need to get it sort of biological causality. And we really need to think about um, fun ways of measuring functions so we get a causality. And, and that was felt as very important. And it was also felt very important at the, at the workshop that NHGRI should really be the leader in the developing these genomic tech, uh, technologies and should r r raise to the technical challenge of how to scale these things up. That should, is very important. So those were two of the bullets under here. And then there were a number of other bullets that really um, sort of restated what the smaller group uh, just said. For instance, that um, personal genomics should also include personal functional genomics. Um, and um, there's this idea that the assays can occur on many different scales. So there's also this discussion that we really need to improve our understanding of how proteins interact with the genome. Some uh, people were making some comments in the bigger discussion that we really have a fairly naive understanding of what that interaction really means. Um, then under the uh, third recommendation, th this is really the, from the tools to the, actually make the catalog. So there was a feeling that we need to systematically catalog molecular components and their interactions. And of course the key thing here, there was a lot more discussion at the meeting of this kind of systems biology level, interactions level as opposed to elements level. But there was also a feeling that we should, the, ca the catalog of elements is not complete and additional profiling should be done. And then these are the ones that I guess kind of restate things again. Again, the, the overall summary restated this idea that's in a sense obvious that functional genomics is much more than characterizing variants. But there's also this kind of qualification that NHGRI should limit its consideration to genetic effects. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hand it off to Rick and he's going to give you our.